Hello, so today I am bringing you a kids craft and this is going to be so much fun. I've been looking forward to showing you this. This is something that Squirrel and I do at home quite a lot and I really wanted to do this as part of a fantastic collab. So I'm doing the mini side of the collab and a dear friend of mine is doing the Mickey. So here's our finished mini and I would love for you to head over after watching this to see Maggie over at Red Ted Art do a Mickey bookmark. It's super and we're gonna have a go ourselves at some point soon. But first of all, let's plow on and I'll show you how to do this fantastic craft involving plenty of polymer clay and lots of other things that you see here. So, what have we got here? We've got some tools that you're gonna need already. So we've got some, uh, we've got the different color polymer clay. These are the colors that we picked. We've got our Mickey or mini shaped cutter, some select beautiful, very small shells that we've found and washed. Two of these tools, they're like Play-Doh tools, plus a rolling pin. And from your bead stash, if you happen to have some, we've picked up some of these fantastic cuties. And they're very small, very shiny, and they're very cute. And I will show you how we put this together. I also want to mention that uh, some kind of varnish like Mod Podge is optional but it's recommended really because it gives just a bit more life and sturdiness. Plus you're going to need some ribbon in a colour that complements the rest of the tones you're using. So we are going to start off by picking out our colours of polymer clay. I use Sculpey, it's much much softer than Fimo I find and what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, get it into little teeny tiny balls, lots of little teeny tiny balls, roll them up nice and soft, nice and round and we're just going to make a great big pile of them. You know what, let's just speed this up a little bit, okay? Okie dokie, so now we've got a good collection there. You might want to bolt on a few more at the end just to see how much space you've got and if you need to make it any bigger to fit your cookie cutter. But what we're going to start with is just making a centre point and we're going to squish them. You heard me, we're going to squish them just side by side with a very slight overlap so that the colours kind of complement each other in their placement and you just go to town making it up as you go. So it's kind of like pressing a pebble bed together, that's what I think it looks like, like pebbles on a beach. And so we're going to keep building this up until it's a decent size that your cookie cutter can fit into, okie dokie. Now really, you could be doing this directly onto a baking tray with some foil on it, that would go straight in the oven. But I can do that because the foil is reflecting into the camera. So I basically pick this up off the board using a palette knife, but you can go straight on. So as you can see, we're all piled up nicely. We've got a rolling pin and we are going to roll it out to it so it's just uh, maybe four to five millimeters thick. Make sure it's nice and even. And uh, now what we're going to do shortly is with our cookie cutter is we're going to make a borderline and the reason we do this is because when we press the shells and the beads in shortly it just makes it spread slightly. So we need just kind of a border and a guide to go on. So uh, and then we're going to press out the shape properly a little bit later. So any minute now she's gonna get a cookie cutter. Come on girl. There she goes. And you're gonna find the nicest pattern, the nicest line up there. Is that good? That's alright, isn't it? Ah, that's best. Alright, so we're gonna push it in just slightly, just enough to make a mark, then lift it out carefully. Perfecto. As you can see, we didn't press all the way in, just enough to make a mark to use as a guide. And now, we're gonna use a straw. And that straw, if you were wondering, is going to make a hole for our ribbon later on so that we can make both a hanger and give Minnie her bow using that ribbon. Again, we're not going to pull it all the way out because it is going to spread as we push things in. So, here we go. Let's get our shells. So, we go rock pulling a lot and things like that. This isn't our best collection, but it's going to do for today. And we're going to pick out the prettiest ones. And uh, that's the best thing to do. Obviously, give them a jolly good wash, make sure they're not going to whiff, make sure there's nothing alive in it, and uh, then when they're nice and dry and clean, you can get ready to use them in this craft. So it's always shells first, beads after. 
or the other way around if you fancy, but I just find it works better this way around. And I'm going to just take a peek uh, around the, my mini craft and just see where I want to place my shells. And uh, using that Play-Doh tool is just going to be a nice idea just for using to press down gently with some of the beads where you can't get your fingers in properly. So let's get these shells lined up just where we like them. Remember, we want to stay in relatively far from the guidelines because we don't want to spread too much. And also when we put the cookie cutter through, we don't want any shells or beads to be in the way. Okay, that lineup looks pretty good and I don't think we're going to need those extra shells so we're just going to pop them to one side. So next comes a very exciting but it's all the beads. So I picked out just a few from my stash but you know, whatever you can get your hands on. You can get some very good collections in bead shops like mixed bags of similar colours and things like that. Now when you're picking out your beads you want plastic and glass. So you want to avoid wood and uh, you must be pretty careful about them really. I mean anything that has a coating on it or paint. Some of the plastic ones have a nice kind of coating on them but I found them to be pretty good because the oven doesn't really go up very high. But uh, it's all down to trial and error I'm afraid. Just see what you can come up with. And uh, so we're just going to place these ones in and we're going to arrange them really nicely. Uh, kind of wherever you fancy around those shells is just gonna look all fancy nice. And don't forget you've got your tool there so you can nudge them all in firmly straight into the polymer clay and uh, so it's nice and secure, you don't want any loose ones and uh, it just helps so that your fingers can't get in there and you're not going to make any marks or fingernail marks that you're not going to want involved in the finished article really. Okay, so now we're actually ready to do the cuts. So first of all, with the straw, I'm just pressing in exactly where that mark is. Uh, I find usually it has moved slightly, but that's all good. So I've pressed it in and lifted it out carefully and brought that little bit of uh, clay out with me. Perfect, that's just what I wanted. Now with the uh, cutter, I'm trying to line it up. Oh, and you can see just slightly that some of those lines, they have moved. That's fine, we expected that. So we're gonna give it a jolly good press, very, very carefully. And uh, there were no beads, no shells in the way because we used those guidelines, super duper. Now let's just see how this comes away. Lifting very gently, because we don't want anything to lift or rip. Ta-da! That's not bad. So let's just peel away the excess around it. Now you can save this, you can make little beads around it or something like that. Let me know if you want a video on how to use excess from this craft. I'm happy to do one. And uh, you can see we are left with exactly the shape and exactly how we want to get it in the oven. So if it's not already on a baking tray with foil, get it over there by transferring it very carefully with a palette knife or something similar. You may need help from a grown-up. And uh, you want to follow the instructions with your grown-up for popping it in the oven. And I do recommend you are doing slightly less time and slightly lower temperature because this is a very thin piece of clay and we don't want to burn it or damage the shells or the beads, of course. So let's see how it looks now. So it's cooled and we've transferred it out with the foil so it's slightly lighter on camera now because it's reflecting off the foil but I'm sure you're okay with that. So I've just folded it down so it's still on its foil because now, although this is optional, I'm going to show you. I've used the Mod Podge but you can find something similar and I'm going to very carefully using that tool again, uh, just hold it down and I'm going to cover it relatively liberally with the Mod Podge uh, just to create this really nice matte varnish and it just gives it that little extra extra strength and perhaps just that nice kind of glisten and then you make sure that all of those beads and shells stay exactly where they're supposed to be. I'm very careful not to go too far over the edges though but you can once it's dry turn it over and do the back as well. OK, 
Okay, that's looking pretty good. It's got a decent layer on it. And that's going to take quite a little while to dry. So you're going to have to do this whole craft in stages, really, guys. But it's so worth it. So we're just going to leave this to one side. And look how it looks later. Boosh! Beautiful. It's completely dry now so that we can just transfer it back off this foil. Nothing's going to get tacky or gluey now. It's all dry. And uh, now it's time to get that ribbon that we prepared before. And it's time to create that bow and that loop. So if you'd just like to see how we demonstrate it here. We make it and we kind of fold it in half and we take the middle point which is the fold and using our tool we are going to very very gently push it through from the front to the back so hopefully you've made a hole big enough that this is going to work relatively easily so we're just going to shuffle that through really carefully so that we don't damage or strain any of the uh, craft itself and the body of the craft we turn it over you see it's just peeking through and uh, you're just gonna grab that little bit there and pull it through not all the way obviously we want to leave a relative amount on the other side so there we go so not too much at all just very very gently bringing it over and folding it through so that it looks pretty and it's all linear and it's not too crumpled you see how we're doing here perfect so there's a decent length there but there's still plenty of rhythm on this side you kind of just gotta eyeball it here I didn't make any measurements I just used a very good length so that we could kind of judge the bow on this side of things so we are now creating a bow we're not going to start with a knot but you can so we just very gently thread through both sides and we're going to create that iconic bow that goes with mini I've strayed from the typical curler palette for mini and I've gone for this kind of nice tealy green but you know stick to pink or red or polka dot or whatever you can get your hands on it's all gonna look so pretty but I really like this teal so we're gonna pull to make a nice size bow you can kind of pull it out again and then start over to decide how you like it so you can see I'm having a bit of a fiddle here trying to get it how I like it and then we're just gonna grab the scissors and we're going to carefully, carefully cut the tails of that bow off. So if you are probably not the right age really to be doing this solo, do grab your grown-up. I'm sure they can handle it. Unless you're a pro, take it on. It's all good. So nice little pattern there. Let's just zoom in from that. Okay, let's just get on. Excellent! So just have a play with it until you're happy with it, get it all lined up, make sure you're content and it's nice and tight and it's not going to come away too loose. There we go, that's looking good. Move the tools away and ta-da! You have your very summery beads and shells and shimmers and colours and ribbony, oh it's so pretty! Summer mini mouse and you can hang this, you can uh, keep it on a magnet on a fridge if you've got a magnet to stick to the back of it, anything you like. Look at that, in it jazzy, make some gifts to people, whatever you fancy. Look at that, you're equipped now to make charming mini mouse charms, aren't they super duper? Don't forget you can make the pair! Head over to Red Ted Art now, all the details are below and have a go at this fantastic Mickey Mouse! It's a bookmark, have a go! And uh, all the details are listed below, don't forget to like and subscribe and have a super duper day! <laughs>